He mentioned the idea of, of whatever they do in hockey, it has to have some integrity if there's going to be a champion, and I get that. And you also heard Adam Silver saying uh, in, in that interview he did with Rachel last week, look, there may be a civic responsibility here to come back and do whatever we can do in order to provide some respite and some entertainment for fans. So with that as the backdrop, what are you hearing about where the NBA is thinking it may be able to go from here? Right. Well, the, the big thing that the NBA is going to have to do in any sports league is they're going to have to create a bubble that they can get healthy players, referees and officials and television personnel into. And that is, again, you, you keep hearing me say this, Greeny, I'm going to keep saying it. that is what China is doing. They are taking some smaller cities in China. They're big cities compared to our cities, but some smaller cities in China where they didn't have an outbreak. They're putting all the players well, they had outbreak, but not as severe. Um, they're putting all the players through quarantine quarantining tests, and they're trying to get them into that bubble so that once that bubble can be established, they can play games within it. And that's what the idea of, of playing a charity game would be. It would be practice in creating the bubble. And look, nobody knows how this is going to go. We have a lot of things we have to go through. But it's even possible that this bubble could be created in a non-NBA city. If we get to May and we find places in this country that have less of an outbreak than others, where it may be safer to get a gathering together, maybe it's in Nashville, Tennessee. Maybe it's in Billy Montana. Maybe it's a non-NBA city. But the ability to create that bubble to play within is what the NBA is going to try to figure out. And they're going to spend a lot of time watching and trying to figure out how to do that. I have Jalen Rose with us here. And, and we will only be able to hear Jalen. We're having some trouble technologically getting his shot up there. I think a lot of us could do to see your face and it would make us feel good, Jay. So I'm sorry we can't do that. But what, what are you hearing right now from players relative to the idea of when they might come back, how comfortable they feel about all the options on the table and things like that? Well, 50% of the beauty of having me on is to actually be able to see how fresh my cut is <laughs> and how fly my suit is. That, that's, that's some relief that the world could appreciate right now, <laughs> Greeny. But in all honesty, we've seen the NBA have to adjust. In 1998 and 99, there was a 50-game season during the lockout. The Spurs went on to win the championship. It's not a true asterisk after uh, after that happening. We've seen changes happen in the league. We've seen the hand check rule go away. We've seen the ball change. We've seen the three-point line change. And so I think this league is going to be very versatile and at the forefront of trying to do whatever it can to give basketball to the fans. And also, there's not much really to decide left in the NBA regular season except for the eighth spot in the Western Conference. So Best case scenario, if you could get five games to see if Memphis can hold down the spot over the Pelicans in Portland, where they now have a three-and-a-half game lead, that's really all that's left to decide in the regular season. Otherwise, you play a couple of exhibition games and you get right to the playoffs. That was going to be my question. I asked Mark to share this relative to baseball. I'll ask it to you. How long do you believe players would need to be back together and playing in order to get ready for – what might constitute an actual playoffs, an actual postseason to decide a, a, a legitimate champion? Two weeks. Training camp normally is a week, and it used to be where teams and players could practice twice a day. I think a 14-day period is plenty of time for players to get back up into some type of shape where they can go out and be effective and not get themselves injured and also provide some elite basketball. And I hear this tone about – when should the NBA or when shouldn't the NBA start? Let me just put something out here. The NBA could start mid-June, mid-July. The NBA could start in August. This idea that you can't play basketball in September because you don't want to compete with the NFL is absurd. Of course, the shield is and it will remain something that is hollowed in American grounds. And don't get me wrong, I can't wait for the NFL season. But it's still the beginning of the year. If you got NBA playoffs happening in September, I think the enthusiasm for LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard will be just as excitable as Tom Brady playing with the Bucks. Could be. Now, Wendy, let me come back to you on that thought because there are any number of different considerations here, which would include if you were to play a season that went that long, when would you start the next one? Uh, for, for context, I will mention that the English Premier League, the soccer league, um, has announced they will finish this season in its entirety, no matter what happens, even if it means delaying 
the next season. That, that's something that obviously the leagues here may have to start giving some consideration to because we have an offseason. You have free agency or whatever that's going to look like. You have a draft and whatever that's going to look like. So could they do that? And if so, would they be willing to push back the start of what would be then the next season? Well, the two giant things with the EPL, number one, they don't have a playoffs. Right. Uh, th their season is determined. Their champions determined within the season. The second thing is they'd have to give their TV money back if they don't play the games, whereas the NBA's is guaranteed. But there's a huge difference between what Gary Bettman said and what Adam Silver said. I agree with Jalen. I don't think they're worried about what would happen with the NBA calendar. I don't think they're worried about preserving the tradition of every champion before. I think they'll do whatever it takes or whatever it is on the calendar, and I don't think I would rule out September basketball at all. And finally, Jalen, I would ask you this, and I wish we could see your face when you answer it, because I think it's an important question. Now, you're a former player, and I know how seriously you take the responsibility as, 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 a, as a celebrity and as being someone who provides something of value to people. Do you believe the league has a civic responsibility and the players have a responsibility, if and when they can safely, to come back in whatever form they can to provide some sort of entertainment for people who are going through extraordinary circumstances right now? I absolutely do, and that's the beauty of entertainment, and that's what comes with celebrity. We live in a country where we value that more so than people who have important jobs, in my opinion. For example, teachers. Look no further than how we pay for entertainment versus what teachers make um, to do their jobs of basically raising our kids eight hours a day. And absolutely, the NFL, again, is, has, has been a, a, a marketing bonanza for the way that they've bottled those now 17 games and turned it into a, a, a great product for the masses. But there's nothing like the popularity of NBA players. Look no further than commercials, the Forbes list, social media. The popularity of the NBA player is so outstanding to have them performing at an elite level to bring joy to fans, plus doing what they love is a win-win for everybody involved.